and we're live. All right. Welcome all. Welcome to the Derry Township Board of Supervisors meeting scheduled for June 23rd, 2020, seven o'clock. I'm now calling the meeting to order. Uh, this time, would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which which one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for justice all. all right thank you everybody Mr. Crisman would you please conduct a roll call certainly Supervisor Wyckoff here. Supervisor Abruzzo. Here. Supervisor Court. Here. Supervisor Nutt. Here. And Supervisor Zamuda. Here. Five present, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Chrisman. Uh, I would note we had a public hearing this evening at six o'clock to go, go over a conditional use application. We did not hold an executive session prior to this evening's meeting. Uh, general housekeeping. Uh, the, this meeting is recorded as are all our meetings. Uh, this meeting is the, in addition to being recorded is also captured on Zoom and also on YouTube. So we would just advise all persons uh, speaking tonight and perhaps appearing uh, through Zoom uh, that your comments will be recorded and, they, and anything you say or uh, perhaps if you're on the camera like us, anything you do will be recorded and, and preserved on YouTube, I think for uh, the rest of the existence of YouTube. So just keep that in mind. Um, the first item on our agenda is the visitor or public comment session. Um, as we typically do, we have two visitor or public comment sessions. Um, we ask uh, folks wishing to speak to identify yourself by name, first, first name and last name, and by address. Um, and again, uh, you have the opportunity during the public comment session to place comments on, into the record. Um, at that time, we ask when you rise, after you've introduced yourself, to make your comments brief, to the point, and at all possible in less than three minutes. If you go beyond three minutes and you get close to that three minute mark, I'll, I regrettably will have to interrupt you just to ask you to wrap up, uh, but, uh, and then we'll give you a few seconds to wrap up your point. So uh, those, are the, those are sort of the rules of the road for the visitor public comment session. Again, one now, one at the end of the meeting. Uh, and so Mr. Blehush, uh, our IT professional is sort of the keeper of the folks that wish to speak. Um, I can see a list of attendees. If folks raise their hand, Mr. Blehash will go in order and he'll introduce folks into the sort of forum here. Um, when he introduces you, when, he, when you get moved over, um, again, that's your opportunity to identify yourself, name, address, and then, you know, I'll loosely keep track of the three minutes um, and that's how we'll run it. Okay, so um, Mr. Blehash, I will turn it over to you. I see one hand up. And I think, and we heard from this resident uh, at the, uh, already, so we know that we have someone wishing to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, we have Colleen Stewart. Good evening. Thank you to the Board of Commissioners for allowing me to speak. My name is Colleen Stewart. I live at 319 Laurel Drive, Hershey 17033. Um, over the last month, um, I've had um, email conversations with Chief uh, Warner um, from the Hershey PD um, in regard to um, police parameters of, um, of policing, things like um, body cameras, automobile cameras. And he indicated that the township does not have body cameras for its officers. And um, I read in Penn Live in 2019 that the township was considering body cameras. 
I was wondering if anybody um, in the Board of Supervisors could speak to whether we pursued providing body cameras for our police force. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. I will, um, we're gonna, we'll hold that comment. It's a, a good point. It's a uh, good question. What we'll do is we'll come back in order to keep the meeting moving in the regular, in a regular uh, flow of the agenda. Uh, Chief Warner will give a report during board reports. And Ms. Stewart, if it's okay with you, I'd like, that would be the appropriate time for the chief because then he'll have the floor and he can answer, he can go through that. Um, and and uh, as could any other supervisor that might have some insight on that issue from the past. So uh, if that's acceptable to you, we're gonna we'll look back to see if there's any other public comment during this session, and we will we will return to that question when we get to the chief during board reports. So Brian, do you have are there any other attendees wishing to speak or raising their hand? I'm sure there's no one else at this time. All right, thank you, Brian. Uh, we will then move to the next item on the agenda, which is the adoption of minutes. Uh, the first item A, little i, is the approval of minutes from our June 9th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. All supervisors have had an opportunity to review those minutes. Are there any questions or changes to those minutes? No, sir. If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. It's moved by Ms. Court. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any discussion or comment? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving our June 9th, 2020 Board of Supervisor meeting minutes, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and the meeting minutes are approved. Thank you very much. The next item is old business on our agenda, and uh, I'll confer with Mr. Chrisman. There are no items listed under old business, and just confirming that that's accurate. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, then moving along, that'll take us to new business. The first item on new business is A1-16. It is an update on fiscal year 2020 budget, and I believe that is Mr. Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you give me a second, I'll try to get this queued up over here on my other screen. Let's see here. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do appreciate the opportunity to be before the board again this evening to present a budget update. Um, as everyone is aware, uh, a few months ago, we started to present uh, to the board each month a summary of where our numbers are in the current month. In this case, it would be May of 2020. Um, some of this will be a little repetitive, but for those folks that are joining us for the first time, I think it's important that they have an understanding of how the township's budget works, how it's formatted. And I'm just gonna kind of give a highlight of some of those things, very much what was in my last report. Um, and by way of introduction, uh, in addition to what's on the slide in front of you right now, uh, since April 1st, uh, the state of Pennsylvania has been under a strict stay at home order to mitigate the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Since April, uh, the township has been monitoring closely the impacts of virus control on the township's finances particularly uh, our revenues. Uh, some key dates uh, for our consideration tonight, uh, May 1st, uh, Governor Wolf did begin to lift some restrictions for construction activity in the Commonwealth. Uh, on May 29th, uh, the county moved to the yellow phase of the reopening plan. And most recently on June 19th, we moved to the green phase. Uh, without a doubt, without being overly repetitive, uh, the virus has had a significant impact on both the public and private sectors. And again, in a few more slides ahead of us here tonight, uh, we'll see the May month end numbers. Uh, as I mentioned at our last uh, meeting a month ago, 
uh, the months of June, July, and August, I think will be very telling in terms of the effects of the COVID-19 mitigation efforts on our budget. Uh, the next few slides are uh, geared towards recognizing how the township's budget has changed. And for those of you that are new to this conversation this evening, uh, in 2020, uh, our township budget's format changed from what it had previously looked like, and we went to a more fund accounting system. Um, and as you may or may not be aware, Section 3205 of the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code does set the parameters by which the township can assess tax levies and those established guidelines. So for our benefit tonight, the 2020 budget uh, is basically uh, broken up into 11 funds, eight of which are operating and three are capital, all of which you see on the slide before you now. When we look at the revenue side of our equation, uh, this is the adopted 2020 budget. You'll see that in the second column, you'll see that the adopted budget for this fiscal year, total revenues are 25 million, 100,650. Um, that's a 25% increase over where we were a year ago. A lot of that is captured simply because the format of the budget changed in addition to the, the tax increase that the township did put in place. Uh, beginning in 2019 and 2020. This is a graphic representation of where our total real estate tax dollars, uh, as well as all revenue sources coming into the township are. As you can see here on this slide, 85% of our total revenues come from Act 511 and real estate property tax combined. So what are the effects of COVID-19? Well, as I just mentioned, 85% of our general fund revenue is comprised of real estate property taxes and Act 511 taxes. Most important to our discussion tonight is the Act 511 taxes, which include real estate transfer taxes, earned income tax, local services tax, occupation tax, amusement tax, and of course the parking tax. Through the end of May, our revenue should be trending at 42% or higher and expenses in the budget should be trending 42% or lower. As of the end of May, most of our township revenue categories are holding or are beginning to show some weakness. And I'll get to that in a minute on the next slide. Uh, with mitigation strategies, shuttering local businesses and tourist destinations like Hershey Park, our amusement and parking tax revenue is underperforming significantly. Combined, both revenue categories account for $2.3 million of general fund revenue. And through the end of May, the township has only realized $99,499 of what we projected. Hershey Park has recently published that they intend to open both Zoo America and Hershey Park uh, as soon as July 3rd. But again, that opening is, is going to be limited to any restrictions that are put in place by the CDC and the, and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Um, Hershey Park has already published that they will follow those guidelines. So even with a shortened, highly regulated season, amusement and parking tax revenue at best may only hit 50% of our budget, which would create a, a $1.1 million shortfall in total revenue for the township. This slide before you tonight shows uh, the May numbers in relationship to where we were one year ago in May of 2019. So starting at the top, I'd like to call your attention to uh, the real estate tax section. This includes the, the Hershey Medical Center pilot and the Giant Center pilot. As you can see, uh, for the month of May, they are highlighted with zeros. Uh, we have yet to receive those pilot payments. I do anticipate those to be received by the end of the year. Um, as the board is aware, the township did put in place a uh, moratorium on penalty on interest and penalties for real estate taxes, pilot payments are treated in a very similar way. So I would anticipate that payment for those uh, would come later in the year, most likely towards December. Uh, moving down at what you see below the 301 section is the Act 511 taxes that I referenced before. Um, starting with earned income tax, I think it's kind of interesting. This is the one area where I thought we would begin to see a lot of weakness even in the month of May. Um, we are actually performing on target uh, and have collected a little bit more money than where we were one year ago. So in light of the pandemic, uh, I'm happy to at least report that it appears that our local employers are still uh, maintaining their workforces to a degree that EIT has not suffered as of yet. That's not to say that through the months of 
uh, June, July, and August, we won't see weakness, but at least through the end of the month of May, we're still performing where we need to be. Um, where I'm beginning to have concern is with our LST amusement tax and parking lot tax payments. Um, LST is severely underperforming at the moment, but I did learn uh, by uh, questioning the tax association that they are in the process of still recording um, fourth quarter of 2019 and the first quarter of 2020 LST payments. We're anticipating an additional $233,000, $234,000 uh, in the month of June, once they finish up their processing of those collections. Um, so that would bring our target numbers for LST closer to being within budget, um, but we'll certainly keep an eye on that as we move forward. Um, as everyone is aware, obviously Hershey Park, Zoo America, any of our amusements locally, they are closed. So we have received zero uh, hotel, um, excuse me, amusement tax and parking lot tax for the month of May, I would anticipate the same for June. Um, and you can see where we were one year ago. Um, we're severely underperforming in these areas, which is what causes me the most concern with respect to us moving forward uh, with a million dollars or more in a shortfall. Um, we'll have to see where uh, with the opening of Hershey Park on July 3rd, if we can recover some of those revenues through the remainder of the year. But again, as I had mentioned earlier, in a highly regulated environment with reduced uh, park capacity, uh, these numbers will certainly be impacted by that. To what degree, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, moving on. These are some of my comments that I just made. Um, Hershey Park, again, having an abbreviated season, I want everyone to realize that we may see a 50% or more reduction with, with what we anticipated in our budget, creating possibly up to a $1.1 million shortfall. I want everybody on this call, our board, our staff, our community to understand that this will pre present a, a need for reducing services in our fiscal year 2021 budget without a doubt. Um, on the second half of our equation this evening, I mentioned we talked about revenues. Um, this is a snapshot of the, of the general fund budget, the expense side of the equation. As you can see, uh, the 2020 budget was adopted at $20,793,327. This includes interfund transfers um, as all of the real estate taxes are collected now in the general fund for this fiscal year until the, until the millage will be divided between the allowable funds moving forward. Again, this next slide here is a graphic representation of where our expense, major expense categories are uh, in the township. And lastly, this is a picture of the approved capital projects. In my last month's presentation, I did talk about uh, where we are freezing um, all of the capital expenses that aren't provided for through recent bond issues that the township had undertaken in 2019. Uh, we have done that to this point. Uh, so moving on, our next steps for the current year is very similar to what I mentioned last month. I wanna continue for us to monitor all of our revenues, close our revenue gaps with targeted cuts across the budget, which we continue to do. Um, we did uh, do an immediate deferral of all non-essential capital projects. We continue to evaluate debt service restructuring to take advantage of the current interest rate market. Um, as the board is aware, you did approve a borrowing for the Dairy Township Municipal Authority most recently. Um, they went to market and, and achieved a percent, a 20 year percentage rate at 1.67, which I think is phenomenal. Um, any current vacancies that we have in the township beyond those needed for essential services are being frozen for the remainder of the fiscal year. Um, Operationally, as I, as I mentioned, moving forward, you know, I think everyone needs to fully anticipate that we will have a shortfall of at least a million dollars uh, by the end of this year. Um, I'm recommending and that we continue furloughing part-time, full-time and part-time employees in non-essential roles to reduce our personnel costs and reduce part-time employee hours across all township services, which would include the recycling and yard waste center records, CSOs, dispatchers, and the Hershey Public Library. Um, 
I'm also recommending that we eliminate any non-essential contracts that the township is engaged in at this point, primarily Recycle Bank and Code Red. Um, the police department uh, made that recommendation to us, and I think we can go with a more robust service that's less costly, and we'll be bringing that forward to the board in the future. Uh, additionally, we are, we are moving forward with a copier restructuring uh, to try to save costs uh, throughout the township buildings, uh, reducing copier services in order to save costs moving forward. Um, Overall, to date, with the departments making their adjustments to operations to help close our gap, uh, we have achieved at least $430,000 of savings through those cuts. Um, really, our next steps for the fiscal year 2021 budget, our number one goal as a township is to maintain our, our line, hold the line on real estate taxes. And I, again, I'm going to reiterate that all township departments are being evaluated, all existing services reviewed for possible restructuring and or outsourcing and non-mission critical positions may be eliminated moving forward. Additionally, we need to focus on elimination of services that can be provided by other governmental and or non-governmental entities. Moving forward next year, our collective bargaining agreements will be impacted by these losses. Um, again, we'll continue to, to evaluate debt service restructuring opportunities, but most importantly, as we begin to develop the 2021 budget, Aside from cutting our expenses and holding the line on taxes, the township must refocus its efforts on building reserve funds. Um, you know, the town, this township, to its credit, has been very lean over the last 20 years. Um, however, I can say with certainty, we as a community have never experienced anything quite like COVID-19. Um, this result of, of lack of revenue will be felt for years to come. It will ultimately result in a reduction of services, as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. It will result in cuts in staff and use of some fund balance to allow us to hold the line on taxes. Again, um, I'm trying not to panic everyone, but at the same time, I think we all need to go into this eyes wide open, knowing that there are changes coming. Um, we need to take this opportunity uh, to look at streamlining how government delivers services to its community and no stone will be left unturned, uh, that I will tell you. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open it up to the board members if you have questions or would like some additional detail, I will do my best to answer those questions. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'll open up any board members, uh, questions for Chris. No, I have nothing. No, okay, thank you, Rick. I'll, I, I have one or two, probably I have, I have one maybe two. some will generate some more, but so Chris, we're looking at one point, you're looking at the budget for the remainder of 2020, we see a $1.1 million shortfall in the budget. Um, and you've listed the things that we can do. Um, first, can you give us, uh, you know, where are we right now on our reserve fund? Right now, the township is still hovering around that four and a half million dollar mark. But at this point, you know, with the loss in revenue, as that continues to get wider as time goes on, the reliance on the cash balance is going to become more pressured. So in the short term, we have to continue what we're doing, which is evaluating, you know, furloughing full time and part time positions. Um, trying to cut as much overhead out of the budget as possible so that we can narrow that gap between uh, what revenues are coming into the township and what expenses are being expended so that as we get closer to putting the fiscal year 2021 budget together, that beginning fund balance is a lot healthier than what it, what it could be if we don't make cuts now. So it seems like there's, we have funds in the reserve fund. There's some number, right, Chris? Like if it's $1.1 million of a shortfall, there'll be some number that the township, you and the staff can come up with between now and the end of the year to help close that $1.1 million gap. There will be then a balance that presumably we will be taking from the reserve funds so that we completely close the $1.1 million gap. Is that correct? 
Yes, that's correct. So in in a in an ideal world, you know, if we could look at this in a 50-50 fashion, you know, we should try to achieve 50% of that million dollar shortfall with cuts in the budget and then 50% reliance on our fund balance. You know, we can again, as I mentioned in my closing remarks, this township has been, to its credit, very lean over the years, um, both on the expense side and on the revenue side. So, you know, your fund balance uh, is not as large as it probably could be, uh, you know, had the township taken a different direction, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But nonetheless, we are where we are. And I think we have to take the opportunity to try to make as many meaningful cuts in the budget that long term aren't going to create a negative impact on service delivery. Right. All right. So you're so 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 for 2020, I'm just trying to make sure we're all understanding that there there is a plan, but that plan also includes using some money out of the reserve funds. And then for 2021, the plan is, you know, eliminate the idea of raising taxes. We are going to close that projected $1.1 million budget next year, that budget shortfall next year by um, examining, as you say, I mean, you, you had a list of things that we should be looking at for 2021, services that could be replicated um, by other governmental agencies or non-governmental agencies without sacrificing quality of service, um, non-mission critical position cuts. Those things are the things we'll be reviewing now, but they would, they got, I, I guess the goal would be that you'd be implementing them in the 2021 budget, is that correct? That's correct. I mean, we'll certainly continue to make short-term cuts. As I mentioned, you know, our department managers have been very responsive to uh, this crisis. And again, you know, we're looking at $430,000 that we've removed from the budget now, just in terms of furloughs that have have already taken place um, in addition to service cuts, you know, we're gonna continue to roll out changes as the time goes on here. Um, you know, I think there's still more room for things to change. And ultimately that'll help drive what will be in the 2021 budget for sure. So the, the critical, my last point or question is, the critical thing to keep in the, our mind is, it's, it's you know, Credit to, to people that are on this call right now, uh, Susan and Rick. I mean, they this reserve fund has been built back up, and we now finally have it. You know, it's it's fairly healthy reserve fund, but so that money, you know, the rainy day fund, if you will, can be used to help bail us out to an extent this year or next year. But it cannot be what bails us out, correct? Because there are other implications of doing that. That's right. Uh, you know, long term, you know, I don't think any government should have a reliance on its fund balances like the rainy day fund for, you know, long term operating. You know, you you really want to try to have a combination of reducing your exposure on the expense side while trying to maintain a healthy fund balance, because that, you know, the lower that number goes, the greater the impact it's going to have on other things like your borrowing capacity, your townships, you know, fiscal rating. Um, you know, a lot of entities look at that and, you know, you will be in a much better position financially if you fo refocus your efforts on trying to increase your reserve fund capacity. So I think, you know, so far this township has done a great job doing that. Um, we need to continue that, but the only way we're going to get there in an environment where revenues are severely declining is we have to cut expense. You know, the, the two don't go hand in hand. You can't, you can't read, you can't fill the void. There's only two ways to fill that void. It's raising taxes or cutting expenses. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. And so, uh, you know, in good faith, I don't think this board or the, or the township administration would want to propose a budget next fiscal year showing a tax increase in probably one of the most difficult economic times for most people uh, to date. You know, I think that would be irresponsible when you have the ability to change the way you deliver services that make sense. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, you can use the pandemic to modernize the way you are delivering services. It's forcing us to take a harder look at us as a government to be more responsive to this pandemic.
and how we deliver services to our community. Thank you for my answering my questions. I know Susan had a question. She was first up. Yeah, and actually you asked a couple of, of my questions, so I'll, I'll just keep it short. Uh, Chris, first of all, thank you for taking the time to educate us and the public, and we appreciate your diligence in, in managing not only today's finances for the township, but looking ahead so proactively. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood um, uh, Chris's follow-up question to you about personnel and potential cuts that would not happen potentially until 2021, or could some of those potentially happen this calendar year? Certainly we will look to, it potentially could happen both ways. I think we, in the short term, we're going to look at continuing to furlough, you know, what we'll call non-essential employees. And that's not to say that any of our employees are non-essential, but they are, there are some employees that are in categories that, you know, we could furlough for the time being to reduce our personnel overhead. When we look to begin budgeting for 2021, that's when the board and the administration has to take a hard look at where we can do things differently and where we can restructure service. And making permanent cuts now in, in areas in the budget will save you long-term. I know these are difficult decisions, they will be painful decisions, but you're setting the township up for success financially if you, if you take that opportunity now. I mean, we're gonna recover from COVID-19, but nobody really knows when, you know, and I think we have to take a, a proactive approach and try to, you know, it's, yes, it's going to happen, but we have to be looking at where we are right now and where we're going to be in three years and five years and 10 years. And, you know, if we can reduce the way we're doing business now in a more efficient manner, I think you'll be better off financially so that you can look to hold the line on taxes as we move further out down the road. I think, you know, just like every business in America and across the world, for that matter, it's up to us in the township to try to reimagine how to run the township. And, and that can be a potentially positive thing. Um, my my last other question was related to the budget time frame. Um, I'm wondering if we might perhaps start those conversations a little earlier this year, since it's such an unusual time and we might be required as a board to make um, some more difficult decisions than normal. If there's any way we could dial back the schedule, even just a couple of weeks, if possible, just to give all of us a little bit more time to digest and, and make some thoughtful decisions with you. That is certainly the, our intent. You know, I think there has to be an opportunity for this board to meet in executive session to discuss personnel as it relates to the budget. You know, these are all allowable uh, exemptions for discussion. Um, a lot of these are sensitive personnel topics. So I think it's the responsible part for the board to have those conversations with me, with the department managers, uh, so that we can make informed choices as, as we prepare that budget for 2021. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Good, good questions. Uh, other questions from any board members? This is not. Um, Chris, Chris, then um, the, on your slide where you detail the um, recommendations, when you mentioned that um, the department heads had um, helped to look uh, and find over four hundred thousand dollars in cuts, are those in addition, or are those part of those cuts, or those potentially, if the board were to take action, would be in addition to what the staff has already found? Those changes that I referenced are in the current year's budget in 2020. So they made recommendations to me to reduce expenditures now today. So that $430,000 is shrinking our, our expense exposure by the end of this year. So anything in addition to what, what, I, what I've talked about that would come as part of the 2021 budget, those would be more permanent in nature. Those will be more impactful on services of the township. So making the changes like for instance the copier contracts or the recycle bank, we won't see the benefit of making those changes until 2021. You'll see some of that in 20 by the end of the year because okay. our, our fund balance position will be that much higher uh, simply because we're making those changes. Um, so uh, as we again the more important lesson here is as we get ready for 2021, those, that's our opportunity to start looking at things more systemically and making larger changes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. 
Any, any other questions? All right. Um, thank you, Chris, for the presentation, for the material. We appreciate your hard work. We look forward to uh, a lot of dialogue on these topics now moving forward. And uh, the presentation captured a lot of really important information and uh, appreciate the, the follow-up tonight. Thank you. If no other questions, we'll move to the next item for new business, which is B1 through 24. It's the consideration of resolution 2020-16 to amend and supplement resolution number 354 by adding another deferred compensation plan and administrator for eligible employees and reestablishing the existing deferred compensation plan. Back to Mr. Crisman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before you this evening is resolution 2020-16. Uh, this is an opportunity for the township to offer an additional deferred compensation plan to its eligible employees. Um, this is a plan very similar to what we already offer, which is through the ICMA RC uh, company. And there is no, there are no township funds into this plan, but the board of supervisors must approve the plan offering so that eligible employees may choose between the two deferred compensation plans. Um, I can speak on my on behalf of myself. I've used Valic uh, in the past. They are the the new plan that we are we are recommending to bring in uh, to the township. Um, they have provided this service for me and in, in several other municipalities. Uh, and you know, I I personally am am happy with their service. Um, this is merely just another savings vehicle for employees to defer some retirement savings above and beyond. Uh, what they are doing with their pension. Um, this is completely voluntary on the part of the employee. And again, I just want to stress that there are no township funds that would go into this plan. But in order for the township to have this plan considered for its employees, you must approve a resolution. So before you tonight, um, our solicitor has prepared and reviewed the attached resolution and has reviewed the plan documents uh, at this point, I think, and I don't want to speak for Pat, you can speak for himself, but I think he's, he's okay. If the board is interested in moving forward, you can certainly do that this evening. All right. Thank you, Mr. Christman. Any questions for Chris on this item? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, this is... Go ahead, Mr. Zamuda. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, Chris and I had a discussion about this uh, earlier and uh, he tried to convince me otherwise. I still have some concerns. I'm not only concerned with the, the, um, the investment from the township, which is zero at this point, but I'm also concerned with the employees. And I did a little bit of research into the company itself. And uh, there are some issues with uh, responsiveness and delays in getting their monies. Uh, there's also a question of excessive management fees. And I, I'm familiar with, with one of these companies that I work with, their fees are very reasonable. Rick, you're breaking, you're breaking up a little bit here. Okay, starting, yep, keep going. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably my internet. Um, anyway, we're really offered you to play this is me. Um, if I could, if I could jump in and just offer Rick, I think I was following what you were saying, and um, I'm not sure to what degree you were able to do research on the firm. But as we all know, I think when we look into anything, you can find reviews of all across the board for everything. And I think because this is um, not a mandatory program and it's totally voluntary, uh, it would the onus would be on the employee to look into whether they felt you know it was a good fit for them. So I don't have any concerns um, based on the company's reputation, especially since Mr. Crispin has used them before, and, and especially since it's not a mandatory program that the team uh, has to sign up for. Right, I, I agree. It's not mandatory, but it, it, it is. It's almost like we're certifying that this is a, a good program, and to me, by by approving this, and to me, this isn't necessarily a good program because of the excessive fees. I would like to oh. think that we could we could find a better uh, um, avenue for the employees to invest their money and and get something in the end. 
So I guess, Chris, my question then, and this will sort of piggyback a little bit on what Rick is saying. Um, what what was the impetus for for this for this program being um, considered? I mean, did the, did the company reach out to us? Did employees reach out to us? We heard from some employees that were interested in going in a different direction than ICMARC, and the Valak plan came forward as part of that consideration. Um, and to Supervisor Zamuda's point, you know, if the township considered another plan, you know, you can have as many offerings as you wish. And I think you know, Supervisor Court said it best, you know, the employee can do their own due diligence to determine what plan <clears throat> works best for them. And um, again, I can only speak for myself and, and I've had nothing but good experiences with them personally, um, you know, by putting money aside outside of the scope of a pension. Um, and I've been very happy with their services, but you know, that's me and that's me as one individual. So, uh, well, you know, Chris, I'm not saying... would it be to address Rick's, one of his concerns, if we approve this tonight, would you be, would you just be certain that in whatever way you message this to employees, you make it clear that the township isn't endorsing this plan. We're merely enabling them to, to use this plan if they so choose but that they should investigate the, you know, the pros and cons of a plan of this plan like they would any other plan and it's not an endorsement from the township. Absolutely and I, I wouldn't make it an endorsement anyway. I think it's just another offering that would be part of the benefits that the township does provide. Um, it's, it's no different than in a previous life of mine, you know, Aflac was a big provider in that municipality and you know, you had the option of, you know, choosing AFLAC coverage. Um, you know, I chose not to, but, you know, that was my choice as an individual. So uh, the same would hold true for this plan. So, yes, we, we certainly would not endorse the plan. It's just an offering. And Chris, did I hear you say, too, this, that if we move forward with this, it wouldn't preclude the township from having an additional offering if one presented itself that, uh, that you felt was a good idea for the staff? Absolutely. You know, I'm certainly not opposed to having a variety of offerings for employees to choose from with respect to voluntary savings. You know, one of the benefits of deferred compensation plans is it's pre-tax, as you all know. So it comes out and, you know, it's, it's a great savings vehicle. And it's, you know, in light of times like this, it's a great way to put money aside uh, for the future. You know, and it comes out pre-tax, you get the tax benefit of it uh, later on in the year. Um, so, I think they're win-wins, you know, just it depends on your choice. If you want ICMA, if you want Valak, if you want someone else that may come into the township, we would have to do the same thing either way. The, the supervisors will have to approve a separate resolution for um, a third or fourth or fifth offering as well. Chris, I have a question. Go ahead, Natalie, I'm sorry. Um, with the admin costs that everyone is talking about, the admin costs, there's no admin costs for the township. So there's no match and there's no administrative cost that comes from the township. That's correct. The admin cost is paid by the employees who choose to participate. That is that is correct. The plan participants pay all of the fees. So your investments are covering any expense load that the investors is, you know, is, is for the services that you're utilizing. Okay. Thank you. Answered my question. Any other questions for Chris? Any other oh, I, I just want to say I, I can speak as a retiree that I, I understand what the management fees are at the back end. And if they're as onerous as I'm seeing uh, the people that when, when they retire, they're going to be seeing these fees taken out of their, their checks, their monthly checks, their annuities. And they're going to be surprised. They're going to be shocked at how much money was taken out. So was this company vetted by anybody, by us at all? In, in, and in what way? Well, or, we, I think you said it was just a suggestion by the, by the chief. Well, the, well, there was a recommendation from several different employees that came forward and Valak was brought up as one of the options. I had personal experience with them and we met with mm -hmm. the local Valak representative uh, to discuss a potential plan offering. And that's how it got before the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the replies. Well, good, good questions. Good points, Rick. And I think Chris, just to, just to reiterate, I think it's, uh, 
to Susan's point, if employees come forward with additional plans, I'd like us, they'd, they'd be interested in uh, pursuing. We can consider all of them as well. But to Rick's point, make sure employees understand that we're not necessarily endorsing them so that, that it, would, it shouldn't in any way uh, reduce the amount of uh, due diligence they do on their own part before they choose the plan. <clears throat> True, thank you. All right, so any, are there any questions, any further discussion or any questions left for Chris on this? If not, uh, it is ripe for a motion. Um, resolution 2020 dash number 16. Uh, as chair, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020 dash 16. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Here are none. All those in favor of approving resolution 2020-16, please vote aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. The ayes have it four to one, and this motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Good discussion. Uh, the next item on the agenda moving along is C1 through 7. It's the consideration of adoption of the decision for conditional use application 2020-03 regarding 1630 East Chocolate Avenue. It's filed by Emmett John. Mr. Emmerich. Thank you. As I explained at the public hearing earlier this evening, uh, the applicant Emmett John is a, intending to operate a short-term rental on the property located at 1630 East Chocolate Avenue. The Planning Commission at their regular meeting on June 20th, 2020, did recommend the granting of the conditional uh, use authorization with conditions. Those conditions were read during the course of the hearing and agreed upon by the applicant. I'm recommending that the decision for the conditional use application be adopted. All right, thank you, Mr. Emmerich. Questions for Mr. Emmerich on this item? If this not, is uh, Chuck, was there, I'm looking through the decision now, just to make clear, I think they changed the parking lot, this parking spaces from five to four, just to make sure that's clear in the, in the final form. Okay. All right. So noted for the record, any other questions or comments for Chuck on this item? If not, we can entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve conditional use application number 2020-03 uh, with the amendment that the parking spots would be numbered at four instead of five. Very good, thank you, Ms. Court. Motion made by Ms. Court, is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Nutt, any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting the decision for conditional use application 2020-03 with the amendment uh, regarding parking spaces as described by Ms. Court. Please vote aye. 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 Be opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this item is approved. The next item is D1 through 7. It's the approval to implement a temporary COVID-19 employee return to work plan. And Mr. Mandia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the county and the township uh, moved into the green phase of the Commonwealth's uh, recovery plan, a uh, large number and the remainder of the township's workforce is uh, headed back to, uh, to work in varying capacities. And this temporary policy provides guidelines and reminders to assist in keeping with both CDC and Department of Health workplace protocols as employees head back to the office uh, environment. The main emphasis of the plan is centered around sanitizing individual workstations, wearing a mask when near other employees or the public, and also practicing social distancing at all times. Uh, this plan is not intended to replace, modify, or otherwise alter any existing employer or employee contracts that are in place. Rather, provide our employees with helpful guidance on increasing awareness and promoting a healthy work environment. If this policy is approved this evening by the board, it will remain in place until July 31st, 2020. Depending on conditions moving forward, the township uh, may terminate it prior to that date. 
uh, can terminate it on July 31st or can also extend it past that date uh, if uh, conditions of the virus uh, warrant that at that time. Uh, Solicitor Armstrong has reviewed this document uh, prior to being placed on the agenda. And I also wanna just thank uh, Marisa Weldon and uh, Becky Swigert for all their work in putting this together for your consideration this evening as well. I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mandia. Any questions for Matt on, on this item, on this return to work plan? I just have a quick question, Matt. How will this be shared out with the team members and, and the public when well, well, if approved this evening, uh, we'll be sending this out to all department managers tomorrow, uh, and then that'll be distributed amongst the entire workforce. And then we can also obviously post that on our uh, website and other uh, means for, for folks to know what to expect when they come to the township building and what the expectations are. Thank you. It's really well done. Very well thought out. Thanks. Agreed. Good point, Susan. Anyone else questions for Matt? Uh, I just indicate Matt that, that you know at least in terms of township meetings, uh, board of supervisor meetings, public hearings for the board of supervisors, um, we've collectively discussed you know continuing with these kinds of meetings electronically so that we reduce the burden on staff and we reduce the potential exposure to any of our residents who may want to be at a meeting and. Uh, feel like they can't under the guidelines or are worried about their safety. So um, thank you for putting these together. Um, if no one has any questions, any further questions for Matt. Oh, we are voting to approve this plan. So is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the plan. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know, Rick had to hop off. Well, I think he's back on. He just sent me a message. He was having technical issues. I didn't want to have the vote called till he was back on. So he back on. He's fro his screen is frozen. I can't tell. Well, then he's not here. He said he was going to log off and come back on. We wait as we can wait for him. Okay. While we're waiting, I, I did want to make yeah, sure I thank Pat. Armstrong as well for all of his input on this. He was he was a great resource in uh, working navigating the policy. So we appreciate it. I also thank would just um, I just want to thank all the the volunteers in our community that are appointed to boards or commissions who have been um, continuing on with meetings in this way over the last couple of months and all the residents that have continued to participate, it, you know, this is, a, it's, it was an adjustment for everybody. And I, you know, I guess I don't wanna jinx us, but truthfully, you know, we initially heard some horror stories about communities that were doing their meetings live uh, electronically like this through Zoom and through other vehicles. And we really had none of that. And that's just a testament to everybody here involved on the, in this process at the township but it's also a testament to all of our community volunteers and our residents for um, just comporting themselves professionally and getting the business of the township, you know, keeping it moving. So thank you. Krista, to, to add to that point, just a special thanks, I think goes out to our IT manager, Brian Blausch, for really thinking this whole thing through and working with us every step of the way. He is the man behind the screen, that's for sure. Or the yes. curtain, right? <laughs> <By> the curtain. <laughs> I, um, all right, is Rick back? Has he returned from cyberspace? Where is he? Chris, you're on mute. There he is. There he is. Sorry about that. I just, my laptop just went kablooey. No, good news, Rick. It looks like you're returning on your orbit of the Earth. <laughs> oh, it is. How about that? So we were about to take, Susan was about to make a motion. So we're going to allow Susan the chance to make her motion again. Susan, you're on mute. Sorry, I said I already made the motion, but I'll, I'll make it one more time um, since there was so much in between. I'll... Uh, 
The motion to implement the temporary COVID-19 employee return to work plan as proposed by Mr. Mandia. Very good, thank you, Ms. Court. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the temporary COVID-19 employee return to work plan, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this item is approved. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. The next item is E1 through 14. It's the consideration of adoption of ordinance 2020-05, amending chapter 99, which deals with foreclosed property registration to the code of the township of Derry. Chuck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you've said, ordinance 2020-05, if adopted would uh, amend our foreclosed property registration, which we've had since about 2016. Um, what this uh, new ordinance will do is it will add vacant properties to properties to be registered within the township. What we had found some years ago is that both foreclosed and vacant properties tend to yield the most complaints, whether it's high grass and weeds or other maintenance issues. Through our relationship with ProChamps, um, previously community champions for those that might have been around in 16, um, they, they have been able to continually assist us with getting the properties registered, getting contacts on the books. So we're looking to extend um, that registration to vacant properties to try and keep up with, with many of the violations to help reduce any blight in the township. The program's been extremely helpful for us. It produces a little bit of revenue uh, per registration for us and uh, some for um, ProChamps. And uh, with us tonight is Kevin Seidella, who was with us in 2016 when we started the program. He's a former uh, commissioner with Lower Paxton Township. Is that correct? Or was it Swidara Township? Swidara. Thank you. So uh, between he and I, I think we'd be able to answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, I'm recommending that the ordinance be adopted. Right. Very good. Thank you, Chuck. Do we have questions for Chuck on this, on ordinance 2020? <clears throat> I'll just ask Chuck. So this, this looks like it's another step in furtherance of sort of tightening up our regulations around foreclosed or abandoned properties troubled properties yes that's correct okay. and we i know and i think all of us on this board um if you've been on the board long enough you we've come across a few of these and they do have a life of their own right they take long time to resolve historically which i think is what led to the passage of the more recent ordinance um, property maintenance ordinances around foreclosed property back in 16 but I'm all for this. So anybody else have any questions for Chuck? All right, then. We'll this is, motion. yeah, this, this is Pat. This is uh, just the formality. It's been advertised for a public hearing. If you want, I can open and close the, the public hearing quickly before if you want to entertain a motion to approve and, and adopt it. I think that's appropriate, Pat. Under this okay, so, <clears throat> so this ordinance 2020-05, uh, an amendment to chapter 99 of the code of ordinances of Derry Township has been advertised for a public hearing. With that, we can op open the public hearing. Public hearing is open. Are there any comments from the public with respect to the proposed ordinance 2020-05? And I'm gonna rely on whoever can see if there's any hands real being risen. Uh, I can see the list and I don't see any hands coming up. Okay, <clears throat> any additional comments from the board? Seeing none, we can close the public hearing. Public hearing is closed. And now if the board want to entertain a motion adopting uh, ordinance 2020-05, you can. All right, thank you, Pat. Is there a motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion. The, very good. Mr. Zamuda makes the motion to adopt yes. ordinance 2020-05. Second? Yes. I'll second it. It's seconded by Ms. Court. Any further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of adopting ordinance number 2020-05, please vote aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing on the ayes have it, and this motion passes. Thank you.
The next item on the agenda is F1 through five. It's the reduction of the performance security provided for the required site improvement represented by the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan for Hershey Park 2020 attractions, flat number 1298. Chuck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this is obviously the plan for Chocolate Town, um, part of Hershey Park. Um, the board did approve the land development plan in September of 2018. Performance security was originally provided. The board did take action to um, reduce or release $3,462,012 on July 9th, 2019. Uh, the developer has now requested another re uh, reduction. HRG has performed an inspection and provided a written recommendation that $2,423,515 is eligible for release. If approved by the board, the new balance of the security would be $1,147,482. I'm recommending that the Board of Supervisors authorize the release of $2,423,515 from the performance security provided for Plat 1298 required site improvements, resulting in the new balance of $1,147,482. Very good. Questions for Chuck on this item? If not, we can entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve as stated by Mr. Emmerich. Motion made by Ms. Court. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, the reduction of the performance security for Hershey Park 2020 attraction, Plat 1298, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion passes. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. The next item is G1 through 8. It's the acceptance of financial security for the stormwater management plan for Hershey High Point. And again, I'll turn, turn to Chuck who does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is a stormwater management uh, plan designed to facilitate uh, 38 townhouses. Um, and an apartment building and associated site improvements. Uh, the applicant is Hershey IDP Partners LLC. HRG has reviewed the cost estimate prepared by the applicant's engineer and has recommended that financial security in the amount of $239,506 is to be provided. The applicant has provided the security in the form of a member's first federal credit union letter of credit and has entered into the township standard agreement to provide financial security. I'm recommending that the Board of Supervisors accept the financial security in the amount of $239,506 and uh, also enters into the agreement to provide financial security between Hershey IDP partners and the township for the stormwater management plan for Hershey High Point uh, plan number S2019-018. Chuck, questions for Chuck on this item? If not, is there a motion? I'll move I'll to approve. Go ahead, go ahead, Natalie. I'll make the motion to um, accept the financial security in the amount of $239,506 for the Hershey IDP Partners LLC in the township for the stormwater management plan for Hershey High Point. S219 018. Very good. Motion made by Mrs. Nutt. Is there a second? I'll go ahead and second, second that. I'll go ahead and second that. And then, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion to accept the financial security in this matter, please vote aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this motion passes. The next item is H1 through 10, the acceptance of financial security for the stormwater management plan for Hershey West End Medical Office parking expansion. I'll turn to Chuck again. Thank you. The, the applicant in this case and property owner is the Hershey Trust Company. 
uh, they're proposing to expand some parking area and we're only required to do a stormwater management plan. HRG has reviewed the cost estimate prepared by the applicant's engineer and recommended that financial security security in the amount of $3,545,785 is to be provided. The applicant has provided the security in the form of a Hershey Trust Company letter of credit and has entered into the township standard agreement to provide financial security. I recommend that the Board of Supervisors accept the financial security in the amount of $3,545,785 and enter into the um, agreement with the Hershey Trust Company to provide financial security uh, for the stormwater management plan S2019-020. Thank you, Chuck. Is there any questions for Chuck on this item? If not, is there a motion? I'll go ahead and move that uh, we accept the financial security for the stormwater management plan for the Hershey West End Medical Office parking expansion. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Nutt. Any further discussion? Hearing those, all those, in, hearing none, hear the, hearing none. All those in favor of approving the financial security for the stormwater management plan for the Hershey West End Medical Office parking expansion, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it, and this item passes. Thank you, everybody. The next item on the agenda is the <coughs> supervisor board or committee reports. And, you know, we, we, so if we were sitting in the meeting, Rick would be on the far left and Susan and uh, skip over me to go to Natalie and Carter and then I'll finish. So start with Rick, supervisor board or committee reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had a transportation meeting this morning, uh, a committee meeting this morning. It was pretty light. Uh, we discussed the Ridge Road traffic study uh, which we need to discuss with Mr. Chrisman a little more in depth and the greater Hershey uh, traffic study. Uh, that's about it. Lauren may be able to fill in some blank spots there, but uh, that's about it. It's pretty light. Other than that, everything's good. Thank you, Rick. Um, Susan. Just wanted to report that we had a very successful Hershey area diversity town hall meeting on June 10th. Uh, we had a representative from uh, the Harrisburg chapter of the NAACP, a representative from Milton Hershey School who spoke about mental health uh, related to uh, the issues that have been uh, happening across our country. Uh, and so uh, uh, last but not least, we had a wonderful report from Chief Garth Warner. Uh, I encourage everybody to, if you haven't had a chance yet to listen to the recording, it's on the township's YouTube page. And we actually, um, we, we overbooked the plane. Susan, you went on mute. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not sure when it ducked out. Um, anyway, we've had over 200 views of the video uh, on YouTube and I would encourage the community to take a look at it. Really some great information out there and, and just wanted to thank you for uh, his uplifting words and for his service. and and for uh, speaking to the community, both on that town hall meeting and also uh, with members of the Hershey Rotary Club later. That's it, thank you. Thank, thank you, Susan. I'll move to Natalie. Natalie, you're on mute. Um, the committees that I sit on uh, have not met However, the ICDA, we have been receiving um, updates. And um, just as a note, the township um, or the ICDA, uh, the hotel tax revenue is down significantly as one would expect for this year. It's down 27% uh, year to date over last year. Um, fortunately, the township does not have uh, the responsibility to repay the ICDA. Uh, related debt related to the giant center, but it's just something that the ICDA has been watching and will continue to watch over um, the next couple months. Um, other than that, my boards have uh, not met. Very good. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, Carter. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. DTMA met last Monday. All is well at the municipal authority. Uh, they were successful in their issuance of $9.3 million in 20-year general obligation bonds at an astonishing low rate of 1.67%. So they got a great rate and a great borrowing and thanks to everyone involved. That is all I have, thank you. All right, thank you, Carter. Uh, I would just say uh, I also haven't had um, don't think since the last meeting we've had a library board meeting or an endowment board meeting or an ICDA meeting. Um, in terms of, uh, and I, I did want to report on an issue we have been talking about and for, for any anybody that's listening, uh, we've received some correspondence the last few days over the this issue of uh, what can we do about campaign rallies that come to Hershey and ensuring that the township isn't paying for you know additional or paying for additionals uh whether it's police support or otherwise uh for these kinds of events and i really just uh, i don't want to go through a big explanation of everything we've done but we're working with our solicitor uh, pat armstrong we've been discussing it i'm in communication with hnr on the issue we we i think we're moving we are making progress in terms of resolution of the issue. I think we are aware that people are concerned that uh, to the extent taxpayer dollars go to, to supplement uh, police services or other township services when events come to town, uh, there's some good arguments to be made that the township shouldn't be covering those costs. It's been our job in the last couple of weeks to determine how we recoup those dollars. Are we already recouping those dollars through the amusement pilot and or what, what kind of an agreement can we come to with h &R about these kinds of events? And so those discussions are taking place. I think we're making progress. And I just want, so for the folks that have that spent the time to send emails to us this week, thank you for the emails. I know that I've read them all. I'm not always great at returning every single one that comes in because you know, I'm doing it during the course of the day too, like everybody else. But, but I hear you. Um, I know Natalie has heard folks. You know, read the emails, and we'll keep working on the issue until we and, and we'll and as we get more information, we'll share it with the rest of the board, and we'll we'll see if what what kind of critical mass we have. So, we're trying to move with speed, uh, and we're we're moving through the issue. All right. So, that's it for me. Um, the next item on the agenda would be departmental reports. And uh, we'll turn to the to Chief Warner first at the police department. And I would just remind the chief if uh, Ms. Stewart had a good question at the beginning of the meeting, we asked her to patiently wait about, bot the question was about body cameras and um, whether you need them, whether we should be getting them for you, their use, their value, all of those kinds of things. So if you wouldn't mind starting with answering her question and then going on with whatever report you'd like to provide. Uh, okay, uh, I was going to do it in reverse because I only had a couple quick comments uh, about some other things, but. Uh, well, you go ahead, go, Chief. If you want to do it in reverse, go right ahead. That's fine. Okay, too. yeah, uh, thank you. So I uh, just wanted to let everybody know uh, we're receiving a lot of support uh, from our community uh, during these uh, tough times, and it, it is greatly appreciated by the officers and the staff here. Um, so I just wanted to make note of that. Uh, and then also uh, just kind of following up to uh, Susan's comments on the all things diversity uh, town hall, uh, participating in that. Uh, I did actually obtain a lot of good information for myself uh, by participating in that and uh, hopefully uh, made some good connections uh, moving forward for, uh, for our operations. Um, so getting to the body cams, uh, it is something that we are looking into, I, I think wholeheartedly it's a it's a program that we need to get into um it's a method of transparency for our department uh, with the community um so the 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 things that we're looking at and um uh, i've actually asked the staff to to move ahead with things uh is obviously we need a platform uh a, a, a manufacturer that we want to go with and it's not it's not always simple. There's a lot of different manufacturers of body cams out there. 
Uh, we, we want something that's going to work with the systems that we have right now. Uh, so, you know, just off the top of the head, uh, um, you know, Axon, Motorola, um, GTAC, um, uh, WatchGuard, those are some of the systems that are fairly prevalent, uh, and, uh, but they're numerous and uh, it's things that we have to take a look at what's the best system for us and what's going to work well with what we already have. Uh, so that's one of the first steps that we're taking. Um, the second is, is funding. Uh, on average, uh, one camera system for one officer is about $1,200. Uh, so, you know, at the minimum, we would probably, if we're going to transfer cameras to different people, uh, at the minimum, we're probably looking at uh, uh, 20 cameras uh, for, our, for our size department. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, an outlay on initial funding. Uh, we're looking for um, uh, grants that are coming out. Um, there's been some uh, talk of legislation uh, coming out and actually funding these programs uh, for departments through legislation. So that's another thing that we're looking at. Uh, but the big ticket item uh, nobody realizes is the amount of video that we're going to need to store. Uh, so I think uh, on average, they said that um, an officer can generate up to around uh, 6,000 hours of video a year. Uh, and when you're talking about bytes, uh, you're talking terabytes um, of video that we're going to need to store. And usually that involves either large servers or cloud service. And the cloud service can't be Dropbox or anything like that. It has to be uh, CGIS uh, compliant, uh, evidence storage. Uh, so you're talking a great expense in storage of the video. Um, and then there's also policy driven things that, uh, that are going to be involved. So there's a lot of research that goes into it. It's not something that we can just buy the cameras, implement the program, start up, and we're going with it. Um, it's, it's a fairly expensive uh, thing to do, but I think it's important. Uh, so uh, we're going to try to look to grant and legislative money uh, to, to fund this program and try to get it up, uh, up and running as soon as we can. Uh, so we're, we're already uh, into that um, uh, part of things and, and doing those things to, to, get, uh, to get the facts and figures together and hopefully uh, find that uh, money to, to get things going. Uh, so that's kind of the simplified version of things. Um, I'll, I'll open it up if the board has any questions uh, as far as uh, the body cams. Thanks, George. Any questions for the chief on this item? Well, thank you, chief. Thanks, um, and I, I I, I'm sh I know all the board members feel the same way. Thank you for um, your efforts uh, at the diversity forum that, that Susan was at and, and organized. And uh, thanks for just representing the township so well and, uh, and for being the right leader for our department and sending the right tone with, with everybody, with our officers. And much appreciated. As we can see from all the correspondence that's been coming in, all the good wishes for the police department and your officers. Uh, it, it's, it must be heartwarming for you. It's actually, it's really nice to read them as a board member, but I'm sure they mean quite a bit to you and, and your, your fellow officers. So yeah, it, is, it is good. And it's a, it's a reflection on, on the people that I serve uh, on this department. So um, it's, it's easy to, to be, uh, to be a leader in, in that type of, type of circumstance when you have such good people working for you, so. So we, so. So Kyle, Colleen Stewart is the one that asked the body cam question. She does have a question. Uh, does anybody, is anybody opposed? If This is normally an exception. We don't normally in public and reports open it up, but since Colleen asked the question, does anybody mind if we let her follow up with a question? All right, so Brian, can you um, allow Colleen in and we'll allow Colleen to ask, either make her point or ask her question and then we'll, we'll move on. All right, Colleen, you are clear to speak. 
I wanted to say to Chief Warner, thank you very much for your professionalism and for your response to my emails. And thank you to the Board of Supervisors for allowing me to be able to speak and ask a question. Um, I also listened to the All Things Diversity Town Hall and um, it is a very great outreach from our community or to our community. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for your comments, Colleen. And thank you, by the way, for sticking with us through the whole since six o'clock to, to Absolutely. ask you. Absolutely. Question. Good evening. Thank you. You have a good evening as well. Um, all right, moving along, we'll move to the Hershey Volunteer Fire Company and Mr. Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have anything to report tonight. All right. Thank you for thank you for sitting in for Dave, Scott. Thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Pierce, I just I have a, a quick question for Scott. Maybe he could address this quickly. Um, there was a letter, Scott, that came out to residents. It was a, a fundraising letter, um, and in it, it had a very important um, piece of software that the fire company is now using, so that you can set up your profile, and the fire department knows if you have uh, somebody in your house who maybe has special needs or needs additional assistance. And I didn't know if there's anything more you wanted to add to it, but I just thought it was a great, great service and, and really happy that the fire department is offering that for residents. Absolutely. It's a service that's being provided to um, through the fire department, a program we have that allows us to pre-plan uh, for homes, buildings, businesses throughout the township. We can set up pre-plans and have that accessible to anybody on any mobile device. Uh, part of that is as a community connect aspect to it which allows um, homeowners and uh, residents of the township to include information that we didn't need to know that we might not get normally or through normal channels, but add it in so that it's accessible to all the members when we're responding to that area to that home for an incident. Um, so it, it is a great community interaction between the fire department uh, and the community itself and it allows us to enhance our abilities to respond uh, without having to have so much legwork on our end but allow people to provide us that information that we might not get otherwise. Definitely, maybe um, either you or Mr. Sassaman could just send a short brief to Mr. Blausch to get into the email newsletter, just in case people didn't open up their sure. letter or they misplaced it. It's so important. I wanna make sure that our residents sign up and support you as well. Absolutely, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing that up, Ms. Court. We will move to Tom Clark, Public Works. I don't really have anything to report tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Fair enough, Tom. Uh, next, item, next department head is the library, Laura O'Grady. Yep, thank you. So um, we're looking forward to opening our doors to the public on Monday, the 29th. Um, the patrons have been very patient with us as we've done lobby pickup the past few weeks. Um, so it's gonna look a little different on Monday. We won't have as many seats available to encourage social distancing. Uh, masks will be required. The staff will all be wearing masks. We will continue to do our programs virtually. Um, we won't be able to accept book donations and we won't have toys or uh, board books out. Um, these are very similar to the precautions that other libraries in our areas are taking um, just to make sure that it's a pretty consistent experience for people when they go to different libraries. Um, but we also do have some good news, even though our summer reading program is online, uh, we are getting a lot of great feedback and registrants. Uh, we have 148 adults registered and 151 kids registered. Um, the children have already read almost 40,000 minutes and it's only the end of ju June. Um, adults have read 593 books and we've had 257 attendees to our virtual programs. Uh, and we're happy that some of our local child care centers are also dialing in to watch our uh, virtual programs. So we're even reaching beyond um, who we would normally reach even if we were in person. So our staff has really uh, rallied around trying to get our programs out to people even in these um, different circumstances. And um, I'm really happy with what we've been able to do. And um, as things evolve over the next few weeks and months, we'll be sure to keep everyone up to date on uh, changing um, circumstances over at the library, lifting some mitigation efforts or changing some of our strategies. Um, but we ask for your patience and we also Thank you for your flexibility in all these past few months. Um, it's been a journey, but we're excited to open our doors again. 
Thank you, Laura. And um, did I understand you're celebrating a three-year anniversary at the library? Yes, yes. Uh, just yesterday, or no, it was today. Sorry, it was my three years with the Hershey Public Library, and I feel like it's been a pretty busy three years. So <laughs> I'm going to take the next three years a little easier, I think. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, with all that construction. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And on top of that, the pandemic. But well, yeah. congratulations. Well, I, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Laura, for your update. Moving along, if there's no questions for Laura, we'll move to finance and Cheryl Lutz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to for purchasing or allowing the purchase of the new software for the township. Um, the software is replacing an old system that was 25 years old and was not conducive to fund accounting. So this will be a really nice change. Um, with that, I wanted to address, you had asked or had started to question about the budget. The new system, the budgeting capabilities are wonderful. It will allow each department to enter their budget so no one will have to turn stuff into me and wait for me to get the reports back out. They do everything in the system. Uh, the system calculates everything and it will allow for changes to be made quickly and some different scenarios to be compared. So if a department is wondering, what if I cut this or add this, and you'll see the bottom line right away, there won't be any, any wait time. So again, thank you. Good news. And I, I suspect then, Cheryl, that allows your department heads to really track their budget. I, I don't know. Can they do it even daily? Yes, they can. Everything that's recorded is done um, in real time. So anytime the department heads want to go on and look to see where they're at year to date, budget wise, um, under over, they have the ability to do that. That's really, I always have found that critical in terms of managing budgets is the more frequently you're in the budget, looking at the numbers and, and you know, checking on invoices, questioning invoices, questioning expenses, the, the easier it is to control it instead of getting to three quarters of the way through the year and feeling like you can't, you can't bring it in under budget or at budget at that point, right? Any questions for Cheryl on, on the finance? I mean, I, I recognize part of Cheryl's, as part of Chris, Chris's presentation, Cheryl had a lot to do with Chris's presentation. So uh, we thank you for that as well, Cheryl. Thank you. All right, if no questions for Cheryl, we'll move on to Parks and Recreation and Mr. Mandia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick uh, kind of a snapshot of the next 30 to 45 days of the community center project. Uh, if you've driven down Cocoa Avenue, you've obviously seen uh, a lot of the demolition going on. That's obviously continuing. Uh, the outdoor pool lobby area and the office area are, are pretty much down at this point, and they're working on the main uh, center part of the building over the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, we have the uh, temporary electric service installed. We're waiting for the PPNL uh, hookup for that. We also have our temporary water service uh, that will be hooked up here shortly as well. After demolition, you'll start seeing um, rough grading of the site uh, occurring where you'll start to really see uh, that parcel get flattened out and, and you'll start to get a feel for uh, what's gonna be coming ahead. And uh, one of the first things that the contractors will start working on is digging the outdoor community pool. And they'll also be working on the stormwater management ponds on the site as well. So uh, we'll do our best to keep Matt froze up there. Um, give him a second to unfreeze. All right, Matt, until you unfreeze and come back, we'll move to Matt Bonanno, township engineer. Yeah, I wish I could have fin finished a sentence for him, but um, <laughs> on the construction, I, I have nothing to report. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Matt. And we'll go back to Matt Mandia when he, when we see that he unfreezes. Um, next up is community development, Chuck Emmerich. I have nothing further this evening, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Next on the line is economic development, Lauren Zumbrum. Hi, just a couple of things to report tonight. 
Um, the uh, Greater Hershey Regional Transportation Study is uh, available for public review now. Um, we wrapped up the stakeholder comment period and we'll be accepting uh, comments through early August. HRG is going to be making a presentation as part of the July 28th Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, that study is being hosted on their website because in addition to Dairy Township, it also includes um, portions of London Dairy Township and also Hummel's Town Borough. Um, we have information on our website and it was also in the uh, e-news last week. So that study is out there and available. Um, Two other quick points. Uh, the uh, county is going to be having a round of local share um, funding this year. Uh, of course, we expect it to be um, significantly lower than in typical years because those funds are uh, generated through casino revenues. Um, the township is going to be having our pre-application meeting tomorrow actually for the police and public works department radios um, and the fire department um, will also be meeting tomorrow as well. So uh, as part of that program, the board is required to um, rank the applications that we are either submitting as an applicant or as a co-sponsor. So um, we'll most likely be doing that uh, in August. Um, Last item to note is that through the Downtown Hershey Association and our uh, virtual 5K, we today opened a grant program for our Downtown Hershey businesses. Um, these are small grants intended to um, assist businesses that have been impacted uh, by COVID-19. Uh, we're accepting applications through um, July 6th. So there's information on the um, Downtown Hershey site for that, and we'll also be including information on the ENUS as well. That's all I have this evening. Very good. Thank you, Lauren. Any questions for Lauren or economic development? No, but Mr. Bruso, I just texted um, Matt Mandia and he uh, wanted to let everyone know that he lost power in the house. So uh, he will probably most likely not be on uh, for the rest of the meeting. Thank you for doing that, Susan. And. Uh, We'll move on to the next item for the next person, which is Township Manager Chris Christman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only thing that I have to report this evening is that as the board is aware, we had a surplus fire apparatus that was out for bid through the municipal bid system. Uh, that has been out twice now with no successful bidders meeting the minimum requirements. So we are at this point uh, exploring other options to try to sell that piece of equipment and I will keep the board up to date uh, as we make some decisions. All right, thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris as we move on, before we move on? If not, uh, the next item is approval of accounts payable and payroll for tonight. The accounts payable are $942,002.52 and payroll is $352,415.35. Is there a motion? So moved. I'll second. Ms. Court, seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of our approve uh, of our accounts payable and payroll for tonight's meeting, please vote aye. 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 Hearing none. Hearing none. Uh, the ayes have it, and this item is approved. The barking dog in the background got me. It just threw me off. I'm sorry. Next item on the agenda is our visitor for public comment. Again. Same as usual, uh, name, address, try to keep your comments brief and to the point. Uh, again, it's your opportunity to put a comment on the record. Um, and then uh, if you get close to the three minute mark, I'll kind of, I will try to politely interrupt just to get you to wrap up. But um, that's basically the, the ground rule. So with that, uh, Brian, I'm looking at the attendees list. I'm looking for any hands up, anybody wishing to speak Go on the record, please raise your hand. Mr. Chairman, we have Linda Iyer. Very good. Okay, Linda, you're on. Just identify yourself by name and address and then go ahead with your comments. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Linda Iyer, 2321 Raleigh Road. I appreciate the uh, financial information and the presentation. Much was said about furloughs, but you just approved over 350,000 in the, uh, I assume a bi-weekly payroll. 
I don't see that going down. So has there been a furloughs or are they going to be forthcoming? Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And I think there's, it's a combination. I think that there are the initial, initially we did part-time staff. Uh, it was certainly seasonal staff, then it was part-time staff. And I think the full-time staff furloughs have not yet hit. Is that correct, Chris? Am I correct on that? Yes, that's correct. Okay, but we're, we're anticipating that at some point that very in the very near future here, it's gonna to have to begin. All right, so uh, next up, I see another hand up, Brian. Next, we have Dave Weaver. Okay, Mr. Weaver, you can go Hi. ahead now. Hi, Dave Weaver, 214 Job Avenue. Uh, if the furloughs have not been implemented yet, I'm wondering what is taking you so long and what you're waiting for. Uh, we've gone through 12 to 14 weeks of what is clearly an unprecedented situation and no action, no definitive action has been taken uh, to address this uh, in an in a expedited and emergency type fashion. I mean, to wait 12 months to, before you're deciding to furlough people is, uh, I don't think very responsible. And I would also suggest if possible that uh, employees be uh, consider implementing pay cuts, salary cuts, uh, where, where available. Thanks. Good points, Mr. Weaver. Thank you very much. Any other hands? All right, uh, seeing as no other hands have been raised, we will move to the next item on the agenda, which is adjournment. Do we have a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Court. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Zamuda. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. And you too. Uh, have a good 4th of July weekend. <laughs> and I guess we probably won't talk to each other or see each other before. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.